see, what do I want to do with this? I'm going to wet the surface. And I'm going to start, I think that's a little bit too much water. You can see that big pool of it in the middle, so I'm going to wipe off a little. I want it wet, but not running around everywhere. This looks like it's shaping up to be a tree. And in fact, I do want it more wet at the top. Take some of my other pens as well. You can see already what's happening as the ink spreads a little bit, it separates out some of the colors. And I'm getting this really gorgeous light blue in addition to the dark, deep blue, almost black, that it starts off as. Okay, gonna let this initial thing dry and see what happens in a few minutes. After having a chance to dry, my blues have become much more muted and blended nicely with the browns as well. And I've got this beautiful base to work from. So now the question is, what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to see, I'm going to see first how detail I can get my little lines. You see, I can get a little bit of fine line going here, but the rice paper just goes, slurps it all up, <laughs> really pulls the ink out of the tip. And so I can't get super light fine lines as I would like, but it makes for some really cool little dotted leaves here as I'm going. And I'm gonna, I wonder what happens I try watering down the tip of my brush, which is a little bit of water. I don't know if that's just gonna make it even more absorbent. Yeah, that's just that just makes the rice paper slurp it up even faster. So I really I really love the way all these colors separated and blended out from my various pens though because you know I only used basically two colors I mean I had my blue and I had my brown you know I had this brown and I had this blue and I had a gray that's basically all I had and yet this thing is just it's got so many different colors it's got like this purpley red colors and this pale um, light blue along with the darker ultramarine blue and various gradations of all of those. I'm going through here and 
Oh, wait, that's not the color I wanted. I wanted, that's my gray. I want my brown. I want to add in some more defined branches into this top part of the tree. You can tell it's a tree, right? <laughs> I know it's I know it's pretty abstracty at this point. Just sort of this woven crown of branches here at the top. water to sort of blend these sort of squiggly loose lines gestural bits that I do for the branches Branches have this way of sort of kinking and changing directions. Now again, I can't tell if it's the inks, the different ink that I'm using, or if it's the brushes themselves. Sometimes it's hard, and I guess if I really wanted to identify the differences, I would load up all three of my brush pens with the same inks just to really see. But I feel like I can get a little bit more control over my lines with this number 13 brush tip than I can with number eight. But then, you know, working on this rice paper is sort of a really extreme case because, as I said, it just sucks up all the moisture and, and really pulls any excess liquid out of the tip of the brush fast. So it's hard to say. I'm going to try doing something not on rice paper a little bit later just to get a better feel for that brush. brush tip. A little more of the blues here for the leaves. But you can see this tip is just really beautifully pointed. I love that. So it should uh, it should give me some really good control if I'm working on something that is less absorbent than this. Next, I am going to pull out, this is a white brush pen. It's actually also Kuratake. You can sort of really barely see right there, it says Kuratake. And this is different from, well, it's different in many ways from the other pens that I've been showing you because for one, it is one of their disposable ones. They call it disposable, but these also, I I believe you can still get refill cartridges, although, see this is just kind of a plastic squeezy type thing, it's like a little squeeze bottle type of plastic material, and I think that at least the the other brand, the Pentel disposable brush pens of this sort that I've used in the past, uh, they do allow you to replace portions of it, but essentially is you know, just the tip is the part that you can keep and the whole back end of this, which holds the ink inside of it, is replaceable. So it's, it's like half replaceable, I guess. But 
this is the first time I had seen a white brush pen. Oh, the other difference between this and the other brush pens and the inks that I have is that it is an opaque ink. It's, it's sort of translucent more than opaque. It's not really 100%. Not as opaque as gel pens, for example, or at least some gel pens. actually used it yet before now either. So this is my first time pulling out this white brush pen. You can see how it could be very handy, especially if you're working on toned paper, which is in essence what I have created here <laughs> out of my white paper. I've created my own tones. Yeah, I like I like that it's not super opaque because that means that you can sort of blend it out a little bit and have the edges not completely stark white and doesn't jump out as much. It's out of place. It really blends in pretty well. And what I'm doing is I'm going in and painting the negative space of my tree branches, at least close towards the trunk. Now, I'm going to do something else sort of crazy. Talk about mixed media. I'm going to take some Daniel Smith transparent ground because I want to I want to have a little bit more control over my fine point stuff that's going on down in the base here. So, what I'm going to do with this is just paint a really thin layer, diluting my watercolor ground a little bit of it over this stuff. And I'm going to see what happens. I have no idea if this is going to work or what it will do as a surface for the brush pen inks. But hey, it's worth a shot. Let's see what happens. All right, then it's time to let this one dry again and wait for the next phase. <laughs> 